In our Sunday school lesson this week, we take a look at God's rebuke and our need to heed the rebuke of the Lord. As you recall in our Sunday school lesson last week, we saw where Joshua encouraged the children of Israel to fear the Lord and to sincerely serve him. That is to live in obedience to his instructions. That was a word of encouragement that goes for all of us today. Again, all of us have a pivotal choice to make. Will we live in obedience to the word of God or will we choose to live in obedience to sin? I hope that you would choose to live according to the word of God. Now, if you have chosen to live according to the word of God, you may know, you may have come to understand that it is incredibly difficult to always live according to his word. In fact, nobody is perfect. We all falter along the way. That is why God will offer us his rebuke. That means that the Lord, he will offer us correction to turn away from our error so that we can repent. That is so that we can turn away from our error and to turn to him. It is incredibly important that you heed the Lord's rebuke, his rebuke that is a show of mercy. You ought not take God's mercy. You ought not take God's love, his grace. You ought not take that for granted. As we'll see here in our Sunday school lesson this week, there in the 10th chapter of the book of Judges and the 10th verse, where we'll see the children of Israel, they cry out to the Lord, they say to the Lord, we have sinned against you. You see, at this point in time, Israel, they were again living under the oppression of another. This time around, they were living up under the oppression of the Philistines, Israel's great enemy, and they were also living up under the oppression of the people of Ammon as well. Now, what caused them, what led them to living up under the oppression of these people once again? Well, we are back in the book of Judges, and as we remember from our recent lessons, that the children of Israel, they will find themselves living up under the oppression of another throughout the book of Judges due to how they chose to live spiritually. When they lived in obedience, the children of Israel, they enjoyed peace in the land. But when they lived in disobedience to the word of God, his instructions, his commandments for them, they found themselves living up under the oppression of another. That cycle, as we see here in the 10th chapter of the book of Judges, it has repeated itself. We are told here in the eighth and in the ninth verse in scripture that is outside of our lesson, we are told that the children of Israel, they were severely distressed at that point in time. What was again the cause of their distress? Well, we're told in those verses that on one side of the Jordan in Gilead, that Israel, they faced great struggle under their oppression of, again, the Philistines. And then we're told that on the other side of the Jordan, we're told in those verses that, that the people of Ammon, that they fought against Judah, that they fought against Benjamin, and that they fought against Ephraim as well. So again, we, we can't overlook the fact that the reason why Israel was severely distressed was due to the fact that they chose to forsake the Lord again. They chose to do evil in the sight of God again. And because they chose to do that, God allowed them to suffer in their sin, which would raise the question for us today. Does the Lord, does he allow us to suffer in our sin? Well, as I have said to you recently in both sermons, Sunday school lessons and Bible studies as well, is that the Lord will permit things to happen to you according to the choices that you make. If you choose to live in obedience, then yes, the Lord will bless you. Again, obedience to God's word, obedience is rewarded. Disobedience, I want you to understand again today, disobedience is not rewarded. Nobody rewards disobedience. Why should we think that God will reward us if we choose to live in disobedience? That was true for Israel as well. As again, we see that in the 10th verse of our lesson here this week that Israel's severe distress was due to their sin. They cried out to the Lord and they even acknowledged in their crying out to the Lord that they had forsook the Lord. They admitted to the fact that they was off rather than serving the Lord as they should have been doing. They say there in that verse that they served the Baals, they served idols. We'll see as we look at the 11th verse that in return, the Lord, he rebuked Israel. 
he asked, had he not delivered them from the adversaries in the promised land? We'll see there in the 12th verse that God, he also mentioned how he had delivered the children of Israel from the Sidonians, that is the people of Phoenicia. He had delivered the children of Israel from the Amalekites. We can recall that from a Sunday school lesson that we had quite some time ago, but that happened when they were on the other side of the Jordan, when they had left Mount Sinai. We'll see there that the Lord, he also said to Israel, the children of Israel, that he had delivered them from the Maonites as well. God's rebuke is, it is one that spoke of how he had heard Israel's cry once before, and he had showed Israel mercy. But what did Israel do in return? Did they remember the mercy that the Lord had showed to them? Or did they disregard it? Did they take God's mercy for granted? The answer to that question will be that they took it for granted. And the reason why we know that they took it for granted is because when God shows us mercy, we ought to take that time. We ought to take that rebuke that he has given to us to live by that rebuke, live by the instructions to, to improve, to, to grow from the error that we have made, our transgressions against him. Israel, they would come out from the bondage, the oppression that they lived in at a point in time throughout the period of the book of Judges, and they would live in peace for a little bit of time, but then they would again turn away from the Lord. They would forsake the Lord. They would once again do evil in the sight of God, and then they will find themselves living in the oppression of another, as we see here in our Sunday school lesson this week, where we're told there in the 13th verse that the Lord, he said to the people that they disregarded the mercy that he had shown to them. So the Lord said to them, I will not deliver you anymore. He said, I will deliver you no more. Now, what do you think of that? What do you think that means to, to the people of Israel? What do you think that means coming from the Lord as well? We'll see that in the 14th verse, that God said to the people, go and cry out to the guys which you have chosen and let them deliver you in your time of distress. It almost sounds like the Lord, again, had grown tired of Israel and their ways, don't it? Again, he said there, go and cry out to the guys which you have chosen and let them, let them work for you. Let them deliver you out of your, your distress. Let them deliver you in your time of great struggle. And again, it raises the question today. Well, does the Lord grow tired of, of us? taking him for granted because that's what Israel was doing, right? They was taking his love for granted. Therefore, they was taking his compassion, his mercy for them. They were taking it for granted because they weren't improving themselves. They weren't being faithful to him. They were always going back to the bells and, and serving the bells, the, the false idols. They were participating in idolatry. And again, it makes you wonder, how does the Lord feel about us? when he gives us chance after chance to grow, where he gives us chance after chance to improve ourselves from our errors. The Lord, he wants to be in fellowship with you. And so it makes you wonder, well, does the Lord ever grow tired of us when he shows us mercy, but we don't correct our way, we don't improve, we don't grow? Well, something that we have to remember about the Lord is that the Lord, he is long suffering. That means that he is patient. So it is not necessarily that the Lord grows tired of us because I don't want you to think that for a second that, that the Lord grows tired of you because he doesn't, the Lord, he loves you. But again, the Lord, he will allow us to live in that sin if that's what we choose to do. If we choose to disregard the Lord's instructions where, where the Lord tells us go that way, but you know, we're stubborn in our way and we'll, we'll go this way. The Lord, he will allow us to go that way, as you have heard me say before. And he'll let you get so far into that suffering until you realize that, that you need help and that the help you need is from him. It takes some of us so long before we, we actually realize that we need him. And the Lord, he will sit and he will wait on us to, to, actually realize that we need him and to come back to him. The Lord will sit and wait for, for you to come back to him. 
for you to then heed the instructions that he gave to you in the first place to heed his rebuke and then go in the way that he showed you to go in. That's what was happening for the children of Israel there in that 14th verse where we'll see that God was essentially challenging the children of Israel here. He was challenging them in their faith with this rebuke that, that he gives to them. They cry out, they say to God, hey, we did wrong. They had did that before. They, they had already cried out in the past. We have seen that in recent Sunday school lessons where they would cry out before to the Lord that they had messed up and, and the Lord will bring them out of their trouble, their distress, only for them to go back to doing what they were doing once before when they did evil in his sight. So what we see there in the 14th verse was that God was challenging Israel's faith with this rebuke here. He was testing them. He was testing them to see how serious they were about whether or not they truly desire to be forgiven this time around. Were they going to take his mercy for granted again or were they being serious this time? Would they actually listen to his rebuke this time around? Would they actually strive to correct the way in which they were going? The Lord, he wanted them to approve themselves. You see, forgiveness, we will give it away. But forgiveness, you must understand, forgiveness is something that should be earned today. And that's what our Sunday school lesson actually boils down to. Where we take a look at, yes, God's rebuke, but we take a look at repentance as well. Forgiveness, I want you to understand that that's something that is earned as we'll see in the 17th chapter of Luke's gospel there in the third and the fourth verse. What we'll see there in that scripture, Jesus taught that when one sins against you, in other words, when, when someone wrongs you, when they do wrongly by you, we'll see there in those verses that Jesus said that we should first rebuke them. So we should let them know that they have wronged us. And and when we let somebody know that they have wronged us, we should tell them what they need to do in order to correct the wrong in which they have done. First step of forgiveness is, is again, our rebuke. We must let somebody know that they have done us wrong. We'll see there that Jesus, he said that after the rebuke, one that has done the wrong, the one that wronged us, Jesus said that they should acknowledge Acknowledge that they have actually wronged us. They must admit the wrong that they have done. And then they must make the correction. We'll see there in those verses. They ought to actually heed the rebuke of ours when we have gave them instructions on how they can improve, what they can do to make things right. They should actually try to make things right. Don't just brush off the rebuke, which many people happen to do today. They will hear somebody say that they have wronged them, told, you know, they'll hear someone tell them, this is what you ought to do to correct the wrong of what you have done. And then they'll brush it off. They'll try it. They'll try it maybe for a few days, but then they'll give up and they'll say, ah, what's the point? And then they'll keep on going, doing what it was that they were doing. It doesn't sound like they are trying to earn forgiveness, does it? But Jesus, he then said there in those verses that, that when one actually acknowledges that they have done wrong, when it, one actually tries and strives to make the corrections and when we approve of it, Jesus said that that is the moment when we should forgive. When someone has actually earned our forgiveness, that is when we should forgive. We live in a world today where there is very little reconciliation. Again, where there is no reconciliation, there is no forgiveness. And where there is no forgiveness, there are many people walking around with a wounded and a hurt soul. God, he is not going to wound himself. He is going to make you earn his forgiveness. It is not enough for you to simply confess that you have done wrong. As we see here in our Sunday school lesson this week, the, the children of Israel, they confessed, they admitted that they did wrong, but the Lord will see there in scripture, the Lord, when they cried out again there in the 15th verse, we see that the Lord didn't respond to when they said, hey, yeah, we, we did wrong. The Lord didn't respond. We'll see there in the 16th verse that, that while the Lord was remaining silent, that Israel, they had to actually prove that they were serious about the fact that they had did wrong and the fact that they were essentially seeking God's forgiveness. We'll see there in the 16th verse 
of the children of Israel that they put away their idols. They were actually committing themselves to serving the Lord. By them committing themselves to actually living in forgiveness or seeking God's forgiveness, putting away those idols, we'll see there that God, he could no longer endure the misery of Israel. So the people, they earned forgiveness in God's eyes. The, the steps were met, right? They, God rebuked them. He had rebuked them, if you think about it, <laughs> way back in the book of Judges, right? But they finally heeded his rebuke, right? And in heeding his rebuke, they, they, they chose to put away the idols, right? And they chose to commit themselves to the Lord. So the steps were met. What we should take away from our lesson this week is that when God rebukes you, you should heed his rebuke. You should listen to his rebuke. Don't disregard God's rebuke. God, he is rebuking you for a good reason. Again, God is love and in his love, he can be a jealous God. And the reason why the Lord is jealous is because he doesn't want you to turn away from him and love another. The Lord knows that when you love another, that is to love sin. And he knows where the pathway of sin, he knows what that leads to. That leads to destruction. That leads to destruction that is a spiritual, that is the second death. The Lord does not want anybody to die to sin. The Lord, he wants you to live on eternally in peace and in joy. And the Lord knows that that peace and joy can only be found with him. So if you desire that peace and that joy, if you desire that eternal peace, that eternal joy, then you should again heed God's rebuke. Turn from sin and follow him. And when you do that, again, you will live a life where you please the Lord Again, you will be blessed. You will be highly favored in not man's eyes, but in his eyes. And again, you will be rewarded with the heavenly kingdom. So again, we all have a choice to make. Will we commit ourselves to the Lord? And again, within that choice, we should understand that we should live faithfully in obedience. That means that when we do fall down, when we do sin, God will show us mercy. And in that mercy, we must acknowledge our wrongs that we have done. And then we must commit ourselves to living properly, turning away from our error and turning to the Lord. What will you do today? Thanks for watching this week's Sunday School lesson. I hope that you enjoyed this lesson. I hope that you'll share this lesson with someone somewhere. Now, if you haven't done so already, I ask all of you to, to follow our channel. Be sure that you follow this channel so that you don't miss a Sunday school lesson, so that you don't miss a Bible study, so that you don't miss a sermon or a food for thought. Be sure that you are following this channel today.